Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. So, oh, morning, forgot to say that. It's afternoon, it's almost five o'clock actually. But today we're doing a video on our hoop barns. Get asked about our hoop barns all the time. Uh, what brand they are, how much they cost, why we did this, why we did that. Uh, since the other one is pretty much just finished up, I figured we would just do um, a video about our hoop barns. They're both the same brand. Before we get into that though, I just wanted to mention that our channel sponsor, AgChem Solutions, uh, if you guys are pricing out chemical and getting stuff bought for next year, uh, well, that's what we've been doing and you know, prices have went up. But check those guys out, they have some great prices. Over the years we have shopped through them. Um, we've, well, full disclosure, we don't buy all of our chem from them. We, uh, we pick and choose by, by what makes sense to get from them, what, uh, what we have a good price at. But check those guys out, and also if you are a first time buyer, and you mention Brian's Farm Videos or Brown Farms, we do get a little bit of commission from that. That is a new program John just started doing. So if you would, if you're buying from them guys for the first time, mention our name. Also, you guys get a gift card from Farm Focus. Ag Chem Solutions will send that to you guys. Uh, I believe it's a $100 gift card, so yeah, check it out. Anyways, Back to the video. So this barn is the first one we put up. This is a 60 by 100. 60 wide, 100, or 60 by 120, 120 foot long. So when we bought this barn, we originally were only going to put up a 60 by 80. That was the plan. We figured that was big enough for our fertilizer needs. Uh, I mean, this was bought as a fertilizer building. The guy that we bought this through said, hey, I have a 60 by 180 available. So basically, I think these tarps are broke down in the 60 foot section. So they just kept 60 foot of that building. We bought the 120 foot of that building and, and here we are. So 60 by 120 and it was not a whole lot more money. So we were like, yes, absolutely. No regrets there whatsoever. One question I get asked often is who put up your, who put up your barn? How'd you buy it? Where'd you get it through? So we got our barn through a local Amishman named Ray Yoder. I will put Ray's contact info in the description. He did tell me the other day that uh, if you're in Southern Ohio, I think he said if you're within three hours of Chillicothe, I don't quote me to that, but if you're within three hours, I think he said he would put it up if you uh, did buy a building. I have nothing but good things to say about Ray. They've, uh, they've done well on both buildings. So his contact info will be in the bottom, but we never talked to the company. Uh, I, I don't even know how Ray found this guy. I don't know if he's seen him in a catalog or what, but I've never talked to the, the company that, own, that makes these. I really don't even know what the company name is. I just know the distributor that Ray gets it from is called AK Enterprises in Somerset, Pennsylvania. Again, I will list that website in the bottom of this. I have no affiliations with those guys whatsoever. I said never even talked to them. Didn't even know the name of the distributor until like a few days ago. But overall, we're very happy with the barn. It seems very well constructed as far as the trussing and everything. So if you've been following along originally, this building only had concrete in the middle of it. That was 100% dad's idea and 0% Brian's idea. I didn't like that idea from the get go. And we ended up putting concrete in and it, it, I really like how it is now. We have a 10 foot apron on each end. Highly suggest that if you put one of these up, um, unless you're just using it for equipment storage, then it doesn't really matter. But the concrete is very nice. One other thing we did, we went with a block bottom. Now I like the blocks. People have asked why we didn't do poured wall. Well, the, the, I, I believe we were able to do the blocks quicker is the main reason. One regret, I would seal these things somehow because all that water running down this canvas, you can see the water just seeps in. In fact, if you look back there at our fertilizer, we have a canvas up against the block just to try to prevent some of that water seepage we know is going to happen. I don't know. One other thing I would do, I would put a vapor barrier between your concrete or at least have some really good rock like 57 or like pea gravel or something. We used bank run gravel for the basin here because, well, we have a gravel pit full of it. It didn't cost us anything but it seems like it holds a little bit of water and sometimes we'll get water seeping up through the floor. Not a lot, not the greatest though when you're trying to you know, keep fertilizer. So I would do a vapor barrier. But one thing I really like about this building versus a traditional hoop barn, I call it a hoop barn, fabric barn, whatever you want to call it. We have an A arched truss and not just like a, like a, a U shaped truss, I guess. 
I like how that looks visually and we get a we get a lot of height. I believe it's like 33 feet to the center here, something along those lines. We can dump a dump trailer full of fertilizer in here. Not just this truck, we can dump an actual dump trailer. He can't lift all the way up, but as long as he has a good bed liner, we can, we can dump him in here. Really like that about the building. Trying to think of all the things I like, and then I'll give you some things. Well, I guess we've been given things that change. One thing dad added after we'd already ordered the barn, he added the, oh, I don't know what you want to call that, to close in the, the A up there. I like it and I don't because you can't really dump a trailer very high into the building. That's kind of why we put the apron out there. Before this was concreted out here, if you had a long dump trailer and for whatever reason you couldn't get all the fertilizer out back in the building, this kind of limited us in that we could not raise the truck up out here uh, because the fertilizer was, or the concrete was 30 feet back. Now that we have concrete all the way out to here, it's not a huge deal. And that does help a lot with keeping water from blowing in. But this is, see there's 16 or 18 foot high. So water still blows in quite a bit. That's a very big opening. I mean, 60 foot wide, 18 foot tall, maybe 20 foot tall. I'm really, I guess I don't remember what the height there is, but you get a lot of, you get a lot of water blowing in, I guess is what I'm saying. So this is all of our dry fertilizer that we will need for next year. We, if fertilizer wasn't so expensive this year, we would maybe do some more potash uh, on some bean acres and maybe a little bit more mez to kind of build up some. But what I'm saying is this barn is more than adequate for our fertilizer needs. There's roughly, well, it's probably like 180 tons of potash we spread a little bit, and there's probably like 140 tons of mess. So we spread a little bit of that too. But what I'm saying is this barn would easily hold four or 500 tons pretty easily and still have room for your spreader and stuff in here. Another thing people ask pretty often is why are you guys leaving your equipment in here with the fertilizer in here? With it being open-ended on both sides, there's a breeze blowing through here right now. I um, mean, there's always air moving. In the summer when it's stagnant and humid, I don't think it would probably be a great idea, but we're probably not gonna have fertilizer in here. And uh, we are eventually gonna put tarps over this fertilizer. We just finished hauling the last of our potash today. So we do have pretty big tarps. We are gonna drape over them. So we're hoping, you know, that'll kind of help with that also. We're not leaving a lot of equipment over here, but the spreader pretty much lives here. The telehandler is how we move the fertilizer and this dump truck's been staying here because, well, that's what we haul the fertilizer with. Back to the tarp. This is kind of a downfall of this style building. You got this canvas up here, works great um, as far as keeping rain off, coming straight down, like I say. But when it's freezing and thawing all the time, we get condensation on the top and it does drip down on the fertilizer, which is m the main reason we're doing the canvas. Uh, I don't think it's enough to really bother this fertilizer a lot but uh, we got tarps we're gonna do that um, so we can see if we can eliminate some of that um, and then of course we do have wind blowing rain in this way even if we do get some that's going to get wet we are still spreading a good bit of this a lot of it's going to run through the strip till rig though so we really want to try to keep it as fine as possible but just be aware they will there will be condensation and it will drip down inside now for dividers we just use concrete blocks we get these at the concrete plant uh, they, they went up quite a bit in price and i don't know why this is basically if i'm understanding it right when a tr concrete truck comes back from a job if they did not take all their concrete they just dump it in one of these forms it's already formed for these blocks and this is basically just extra concrete that gets paid for twice basically but they work great for making walls in here to stack our fertilizer up against um, otherwise i mean you could easily just let it run everywhere but this keeps everything a little tidier a little nicer and we can separate the fertilizer products um, at some point we might start hauling a lot of lime and if we did that uh, if we were not spreading it immediately we would probably put it in here on this side of that wall and it, you know it's really nice to keep those two product or those three products separated another huge benefit of this building at the moment we do not have a big shop so as many of you know we are going to build a shop here in the future that is still going to happen we're just trying to button up a few things before we do that hopefully that happens in 2022 if not 2023 but this year this kind of doubled as a shop this summer fertilizer was all out of here by may we cleaned it we pressure washed the floor got all the fertilizer out of here cleaned it up really well and we worked on quite a bit of equipment in here in the summertime this building always has shade i mean 
and it's it's still daylight enough that you can work so it was perfect there's most of the time a good bit of air moving through here so even if it's 90 degrees you're in the shade you're on concrete and there's still some air moving this was a great summer workspace especially since we didn't have a shop I mean if you've been following the videos we worked on combines heads uh, what else did we fix in here I think we worked on a planter in here a few times the strip till rig a couple times I mean basically it's just it's a really nice workspace and when we're harvesting and this building isn't full it was really handy to be able to pull both combines in here with the 40 foot heads on stack the grain cart in here and still have room for other things I mean really like the space really like the 60 foot opening that is really handy um, one thing dad keeps talking about is wanting to close in one end of it that is an option uh, that I've noticed on that website which like I say will be linked in the description they do offer that I don't really like the idea I mean I would want to be able to open it all back up maybe like some kind of drop down curtain just to break the the rain I don't know if that's a possibility I haven't really looked into it but having that 60 foot opening say really nice I I really like that so I don't want to sacrifice that but yeah, I see his point. It does. It does let a lot of wind and a lot of air, or a lot of well, a lot of weather in sometimes. And if we ever did get some snow, which hasn't happened yet this year, it probably would drift in here pretty bad. But now let's look at some of the economics on this building. People always ask, how much did this building cost you? Why did you do this instead of uh, fertilizer bins? I get that one pretty often. So we'll just we'll get into it. So this is a rough number on what this barn cost us. $60,000. Now, full disclosure, we bought this barn at a 2000, I believe a 2020 price, and they did increase in price after we purchased this barn. So we got a really good price on the materials. That does not include labor or concrete, but the materials. Now that, that price is for everything. I believe the barn materials were like $22,000 then the rest of that is labor and concrete, I think. Could be wrong, but like I said, they have one up. So that, um, like I said, that's all the concrete, that's the whole barn, $60,000. The one we just put up is 40 by 80. That one with concrete and a 20 foot pad, so that'd basically be a 40 foot wide by 100 foot concrete pad was $48,000. So really this one would hold all of our fertilizer. And we only built this one because we like the big barn for other things as well as fertilizer. Most of the fertilizer is going to go in this barn. So we're going to use this barn price for why a hoop barn makes sense. Over here we have our potash, which that's the red fertilizer over there. We purchased this in August and we really, we messed up. We should have purchased it in July. We would have saved quite a bit more money, almost doubled our savings by purchasing it in July or um, yeah, June or July. We purchased it at $600 a ton. We had 210 tons for $126,000. There's $126,000 over there. $126,000. Doesn't look like it, does it? Looks like a really big litter box. Now, I'm pretty sure these are accurate numbers, but don't hold me to them. I thought I heard our fertilizer guy say potash was $775 now. So this price, we had to take delivery of the fertilizer before the first of the year. So basically we were only going to get that price if we had a place to store it. So now this is like a cash price today. I'm pretty sure roughly $775 times 210 tons. We're at $162,750. For a savings on just the potash of $36,750. $36, and like I said, that is just the potash side of this equation. Over here we have the mes 10 side, which our mes 10 is our phosphorus and our um, nitrogen. And I believe there's also sulfur in mes 10. But anyways, I think this was $750. It is a little bit more in potash. We needed 160 tons of it for $120,000. And now today, I I don't know if this is 100% accurate. I'm guessing it's within you know 20 or 30 dollars a ton, high or low. But let's just use 875 times 160 again. $140,000 for a $20,000 savings. And there is our savings that the hoop barn provided. We were able to save $56,750 
by having this fertilizer barn and taking delivery of our fertilizer early. But here's the kicker. What if fertilizer continues to go up? Now, most of the time we'd be able to keep it on the books at the co-op or at CPS or wherever you're getting fertilizer from. This year, I don't know that they're doing that. For one thing, fertilizer is a hard product to come by at the moment. It's just, it's hard to get. I know we feel a lot better knowing that our fertilizer is here. You, even if you have it on the books, when you go to get it, if they don't have it, they don't have it. We have all of ours here. But let's just say that they are still making you take delivery of it after you purchase it. And what's this price gonna be in like two months when everyone is trying to scramble to get their fertilizer? Who knows? Who knows what this barn's actually gonna save us this year? But that's where we're at right now. Now I knew that this barn would eventually pay for itself and make us money as well as just more than anything, we knew it was gonna make our lives a lot easier. I did not think that it would pay for itself in one year. I thought, you know, maybe four or five years, um, it, we'd, we'd probably be able to, you know, save the money at this barn cost. One other thing that it really opens up is fertilizer markets. We don't have to just get from one company or one place. We can go pick fertilizer up direct, directly off a barge on the Ohio River and save us even more money. We did not do that yet, but this barn opens that possibility. So. And there you have it that's that's the barns that's how they save us money now like i said we did not need we don't need two i mean this one's more than big enough but this makes a heck of a good equipment storage building um we really like the barn for that uh, there's a couple other people around here that have them i know one of them storing a lot of hay in them i've seen them as livestock buildings very versatile building there is like a 15 year structure warranty or canvas warranty i believe so yeah, we like it pretty well so far, but there you go, folks. That is, that's all you want. That's all I can tell you about the hoop barn. That's really all I know. If you have any more questions or things I did not cover, every time I try to do one of these videos, I always forget something and I don't remember it, usually till the video is published. So if you see anything I forgot or did not address and you want to know the answer to, let me know and I will try to get back with you. One other thing I'm going to bring up, um, this is December 29th. I'm going to try to go home and edit this video and have it out tonight. With this being the end of the year, I'm about to write a check to donate money to the uh, Alzheimer's Foundation, the Dementia Foundation. I really can't remember what it is, but it's basically a charity for dementia. If you don't know, my mother has dementia, uh, something we've been dealing with as a family um, for the last four or five years, and really been dealing with a lot this past month. And we'll write a check for that foundation. If you don't know, we have dementia awareness t-shirts at farmfocus.com and uh, I donate all the proceeds I get from those shirts to the Dementia Foundation. So if anyone would like to support that, go to farmfocus.com, check out those shirts. Say this is the 29th. Anyone that buys one between now and the 1st, I will uh, put that in the check. I'll, I'll get that those totals from Ben at Farm Focus and we'll just include that. Also, I'm going to do a live stream. That's my tentative plan for tomorrow night at eight o'clock and on that live stream any super chats we will um we will donate our share of that to to the dementia foundation I'm trying to raise as much money for that as we can if you've never watched a loved one suffer through that it is a terrible disease um, selfishly i hope they have a little bit more of a handle on how to treat that before uh, before i get to the age i guess where that's a problem but yeah that's uh, that's our plan full disclosure on a live stream with a super chat youtube does take a portion of that um but yeah if anyone would like to check that out we'll be doing that tomorrow at eight o'clock thanks for watching folks don't forget to thumbs up the video and we'll see you in the next one